Okay, so now we are looking at our peacock sitting on this little room here. And there's the blue, blue peacock having a good time there up on top of the school room. You see how beautiful he is. So majestic, very healthy, they are always out in nature. Look at his feathers, they are like shining. Those feathers will get six feet long. We are coming out of winter, so when it gets a little warmer in the summer, those tails will grow big and long. I need to fix my well, the roof on that thing is a little buckly. Let me fix that thing. The string is. So now this little peacock is talking to the other peacock. So this is a male peacock, the Indian blue male. And it's actually replying back and talking to the white peacock that is sitting right there. Let's see. The white peacock is sitting right there. And they're both talking to each other. Let's see what the cat is doing. Oh, cat just went to potty. Oh my goodness. That's a big turd, little cat. I don't know how you can put a big turd. Holy moly. Yeah, I know. Uh, sorry for your privacy invasion, but that's a huge turd. The cat dumped out. Holy moly. Never thought a cat can do that big of a turd. Yes, they're getting good feed from the good food from nature. All the squirrels and everything they eat. Yeah, uh, very healthy cat. So this is the other peacock. They're talking to each other from about 200 feet away at two different locations. You see, this peacock is a male, full white peacock. They're kind of a little rare to find. They are really beautiful peacocks. You see? Like I said, those tails will get like six feet long. Uh, there we go. Trying to run away. That's a rooster. Hey, rooster. What's going? So this lamb man is like uh, you can practice target target practice you see you can do some target practice on them yeah, so you can call a slam man. And when you test the battery, the light will blink, so you can target practice. Target practice things like that, right? Don't try it at home, but you can target practice. See, they're so old, even the bulb broke off because it has been a long time since I got this. But it's good for target practice when the light glows. I need to buy a new one, so these are all falling apart but yeah when the light glows you can actually do special techniques you see special techniques to the vital points of the human that's solar flex so that's the vital point right make a knuckle if your knuckles are strong if your knuckle is not strong then you got to condition your knuckle 
to be strong by hitting on hard objects slowly, steadily. Once the knuckles become strong, you can go to the vital points because they are like more efficient to get into your body. The fist cannot get into the body, you see? Not to the vital points. Not precisely to the point that you need. You need to go to the meridians. So for that, you need a sharp point. If your knuckles are strong or your fingers are strong, you can go to the meridians. And those meridians can be reached by like things like knuckles, you see? Knuckles. And the very efficient way of, of targeting a human body. So, yeah, and you can do other things, other techniques like, see? One of my favorite is the button. That's the button right there. You hit there. Doesn't have to be powerful, just a little, little tap. It has to be a little fast so that they can't block it easily. But if you trap it hard enough, hard enough, that's all it takes to knock out people because that's a meridian. That's a point where the system gets into a shock. Right there, that's another way of doing it. Right there. So if you target human body, you can find the weakness. That's the efficient way of uh, utilizing your martial arts skills, not to waste your energy. That way you can take out multiple openings with efficient way of combat. You see, you see, the fighting art is different than sports. You know, the sports is you can't do all these things. You know, it's dangerous. But in combat sports, and not combat arts, like martial arts, right? These are the things that you do because that's how you, you survive. Now granted, it has to be done in a way that is uh, not obvious. Like in sports, everything is obvious, right? They know you're in a ring to fight. But in combat, like in martial arts, real fight, street fight martial arts, you don't let them know that you're going to fight them. So act like you are not interested in a fight. So you have to surprise them. That is the advantage you get. Is you have to strike them hard and strike them first. So that they are not ready for it. It's not like a ring fight. There is no rules. So you got to fight them. By making them. Giving them a shock. A first attack. With precision. You have to be very precise. So first attack for example can be. Right there. See. Right there. First attack can be like, oh, I don't want to fight with you. And then all of a sudden, you go there and take them out like that. And you can condition this, your ridge hand, to be extremely powerful. And you have to go inside, you see? Inside, you go inside of it. And you have to go right there, where there is less muscles. If you go here, the muscles is protecting the body. You cannot get much... Um, much energy through there because you have strong muscles. There's a very strong muscle. Don't go there. Just go where the least muscles are there. This is the least muscle, right? So go right there into that. It doesn't take much energy at all. Just a 50% sometimes will do it. It depends on how fast you are. Speed also means velocity. So speed, velocity, right? Speed, 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 and then speed, speed, speed. So speed is velocity. That means also power. And once your fingers are strong, conditioned, right? You can go. You can go into places that usually a punch cannot. See the punch? It cannot penetrate through the skull, right? It cannot penetrate because the skull is protecting the eye. So that's why you have to go. Uh, like I said, if you don't have a strong finger for the eye, gouge, you go with the knuckle. Go with the knuckle. Go with the knuckle. Go with the knuckle. So that's where you have to make sure you are aiming the points. Uh, aiming the points. You can aim the points. So hitting the right vital point is the most important. Because if you don't hit the vital point, you're wasting your energy and you cannot fight multiple open end in a street because you'll be fighting like you're fighting in a ring fight and you're going to lose. Surely you're going to lose no matter you have a black belt or not, you're going to lose. 
because you're not applying the combat martial arts you're applying the ring fighting martial art which does not work which does not work in a real fight that's why a lot of people who fight like a ring fighters like a punch and all that in the street have a higher chance of losing against multiple partners because if you try to target the vital points of the body then you are not doing sports martial art you're doing survival martial art the combat martial art and that's where you got to do that fast and that way you are attacking the spots that you want to attack very efficiently and usually it takes only one shot if you're trained well only one shot to take, take them out you see that's one shot that's it and you have to surprise them like i said so they can't block you it's, it's just not ready set go uh, you go when they're not ready right it's not it's not like a ring sport when the referee says go you go no you don't do that that's how you lose you never fight a fighter who's ready you never fight a group of people who are ready to fight you fight at your terms that's when you win that's when you call your shots that's when you surprise them so no matter how good you are in martial arts never be egoistic be humble be almost in a defensive posture but that defensive posture is the most aggressive posture you can have see that is less effective right that shows that the person is not really trained with their fingers to be strong and knuckles to be strong they are trained to be just a close fist fighter like they fight a ring fight but this way you have all the weapons in the reach you have more reach than the fist fighters to gouge to go so when they are not ready there's no reason to do this to the eyeballs because guess what they are not ready that means what you can go to the vital points without they knowing it before they know it so yeah so those are the tips you have to show the difference between sports martial art and combat martial art where you can take uh, people out which uh, relatively more easier it doesn't have to be a grueling fight for <laughs> many rounds hey peacock hi uh, he's hearing the lecture I'm giving on some survival martial arts and you don't have to train for many years to become good at it you just train the right way training the right way is the most important right training the right way is the most important than training uh, uh, some way if you just train from both sports martial art you cannot improve but if you train for martial arts for survival combat martial arts then you can you can be really good at it you see everything has a meaning to it you just don't you see you just don't fight you fight with a purpose you see see where i'm landing it you see i'm landing where you need to be landing it you see that those are the vital points of the body and they have to be applied at the right time you cannot apply when the person is ready because they're ready they'll defend those are little tips to help you out out in the farm you got to do all these things you got to be like nature you got to have a strong defense and a strong offense by the way this defense is very important offense is secondary but if you don't have a strong defense how are you going to attack them because something might come back and you got to defend yourself so that's why being defensive and surprising is a very fast and easy way to win a battle because when it comes to a real fight is a battle you got to be good at it right